Here in Jacksonville, we're very proud to be a military town. Imagine, though, meeting somebody that combines that passion for serving our country and sharing thrilling stories that have produced as many as 16 New York Times bestsellers. I'm honored to introduce Brad Taylor here. Let's start with Pike Logan. Who is he? And how much is he a reflection of real life heroes? You've experienced a lot serving eight years in the Delta Force. But he's, we have Pike Logans for real. They're out there. Not as many as we need, but they're there. Uh, people always ask me, you know, is he, are you Pike Logan? And I'm like, no, I'm not Pike Logan. <laughs> I served with Pike Logan, but I'm not him. It's, uh, I usually say it's, uh, if you look at the PGA Tour, there's probably 1% of the world that could serve on the PGA Tour that could play competitive golf. Well, there's Tiger Woods, and that would be Pike Logan, and there's some guy who's 100th on the money list, and that would be me. Nobody's ever heard of him, but I'm playing. I mean, I'm part. I, it's very hard to get the level I was at, but I'm not Pike Logan. Okay, uh, very good. And hey, why did you even surprise yourself by starting the story in Afghanistan? I was wasn't going to write about Afghanistan whatsoever because it's kind of raw for me. It's raw for a lot of veterans. I was asked by my publisher if I was going to touch on it, and I said no, I'm not doing that. And uh, I still followed it, obviously, because I, my friends were serving over there. I know a lot of the guys who were doing the evacuation. And uh, I, as I was doing the research on it, I saw a story about this thing called the Bactrian treasure, which is real. It's a real thing. In the late 70s, the Soviet archaeologists found this, these tombs, and inside the tombs were just a hoard of gold from all over the Silk Road, from daggers in Serbia to emeralds from China. They still don't know who was buried in there, but they had this treasure, which came kind of the King Tut of Afghanistan, this pride and joy. I love it. I love it. And OK, so let's talk about more of this research. Uh, ransomware. OK, in your research, is anything really safe anymore? No, it's, <laughs> ransomware has become an incredibly insidious problem that uh, and we only hear about it when, you, when it hits critical infrastructure, like the Colonial Pipeline hit that happened, raised gas prices. We know about that. They hit the largest meat packer in the world on two different continents, us and Australia raise the price of meat. Uh, Costa Rica's entire country was locked up with ransomware because they hit the capital. Uh, but it's, it's much bigger than that. There's so many uh, companies that don't want to admit they got hit by ransomware and they don't talk on the news. They don't want a bank that gets hit is not going to let their customers know, hey, guess what? We got locked up by ransomware. None of your money's safe. So they, uh, uh, it's all over the United States, all over the world. The United Kingdom's Postal Service was just taken out last week. Um, and that threat vector was big enough for me to go, holy moly, that's, that's a story there. Yeah, some really timely topics in your books. Pretty interesting. So, Brad, this is a little personal side note. I grew up in Washington, D.C., and one of my favorite sayings on the Metro, the Metro takes you to all the cool monuments around the city. I always say, I wonder how many spies are watching us right now. But apparently this is outdated thinking. Tell us what you uncovered when it comes to new spy tactics and what may surprise civilians about special forces tactics. Well, the, uh, the, on the special forces side, the, uh, at the end of the day, there's nothing really new about uh, uh, the special forces tactics because the technology to find a, a, a bad guy, is, that may change. That goes over, up, over and over and over, satellites, you name it, the Pegasus uh, malware system, the, all these things are, are, are to find the bad guy, uh, technology goes in leaps and bounds. But at the end of the day, somebody's breaching the door with a gun and that, uh, you know, the breaching charge may change. Uh, but the, the gun may change, maybe a new caliber weapon, but it's still the same old, same old. You're going to have to clear that room with guys with guns. Interesting. Okay. And then as far as, was it challenging to write about outer space in the book? Yeah, that was a, a real pain because uh, I did all the research for uh, ransomware and malware and things like that. And I did all the on the ground research in Croatia. And I didn't do much uh, research on space travel because, you know, I've seen Apollo 13. How hard could this be? All I needed was some time and it took, they were up in space for seven days. So I'll just send them up in space. Well, then I started doing the research on that and I was like, oh no. Uh, I figured, you know, it takes eight hours to drive from Houston to Dallas. Surely it takes a day to orbit the earth. Uh, it turns out it takes 90 minutes, 90 mm. minutes. So I was like, originally my idea was they'll orbit the earth twice and that'll be two days. And I'm like, well, it's actually, you know, three hours. Now what are you going to do? You know, getting to the space station, it took us, you know, almost a week to get to the moon. I'm like, well, maybe it'd take three days to get to the space station. Mm -hmm. It takes six hours to get to the space station. The record's three hours. The Soviets docked in three hours. Yeah. So I had to do a lot of wicker to make that uh, timeline work because Pike's not going to solve the problem in 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, things to think about for sure. Well, Brad, any more Pike Logan books in the pipeline? Yeah, working on one right now. Uh, and I... 
I'm working. Uh, it's going to involve Ukraine, which I'm kind of regretting because that's changing so much. But uh, I'm doing it right now. All right, great deal. Well, Pike Logan is not the only inspiration. You know, you are too as an accomplished author that certainly pursues his passion. And of course, for another look at this segment and more, go to firstcoastliving.net.